there was a great scholar uh, in last century in the name of Sheikh Muhammad Zahid Al Kausari, Rahimahullah Taala, and I think Turas has uh, published some uh, some books about him, or uh, or or is planning to uh, publish some of his books. He was a great scholar of our time of last century. He has written a, an article in which he has mentioned that. The, the the title of the article is Rehlatul Ilm, and a travel of knowledge. So he has mentioned that the knowledge of Sharia, and the centers of the knowledge of Sharia, the centers of knowledge of of Islamic learning, has been shifting from place to place. So he has mentioned that in the beginning the center of Islamic learning was Al Madina, Al Madina Tul Manawara, and Hijaz, because this was the basic place from where the spring of Islamic Sharia sprang. Then there came a time when the knowledge of Sharia has shifted, or you know. Uh, transferred from Medina Munawwara to Syria and then there was there came a time in which the center of Islamic learning was transferred to Iraq and so on and then there was a time when the center of Islamic knowledge transferred to the the countries Called Mawara and Nahar, that is Uzbekistan and Tajikistan and Kazakhstan, etc. And then said, lastly, the center now has been transferred to the subcontinent of India because the subcontinent of India has produced such great scholars of Hadith, Fiqh, and Tafsir that. Any other country has no parallel to it. He has said so at a time when he himself was you know, was Turkish and then stayed in Egypt. And there were there was a great number of scholars present in that time at that time in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq, in different Middle East countries. But still he said that now the center of Islamic learning has been transferred to the subcontinent of India. Why? Although the ulama and the scholars of the Middle East were also traditional scholars. They had acquired knowledge through this proper channel from shuyukh to shuyukh from Asatiza to Asatiza, still he said that the center has, been now, has now been transferred to subcontinent of India. Why? It seems to me that it was because of two reasons. One is that even if a person acquires knowledge through this proper channel of Asatiza and Shuyu, sometimes his knowledge is not so immense and deep, with deep inception. They, uh, it sometimes becomes surf, you know, superfluous. But he believed that the scholars of the subcontinent of India, and particularly those of Darulum of Deoban, had very uh, had uh, deep, very deep insight into the into the different aspects of Islamic knowledge. This was this was one of the reasons for which he remarked that that the center has been transferred to subcontinent of India. I uh, you know I can explain it in a little detail, but I think this is not the time is not sufficient for that, but 
वन में साइट अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ एग्जाम्पल्स इन विच द स्कॉलर्स ऑफ सब काउंट ऑफ इंडिया यू नो एग्जाल्टेड अदर्स इन एक्सप्लेनिंग एक्सप्लेनिंग द टेक्स्ट ऑफ द होली कुरान एंड द टेक्स्ट ऑफ द सुन्ना ऑफ द होली प्रॉफिट सल्लाम द सेकेंड आस्पेक्ट द सेकेंड रीजन फॉर विच हजरत अलामा जाहिद कौसरी रहम तिमार्क दैट द सेंटर ऑफ नॉलेज हैज नाउ बीन ट्रांसफर टू सब कॉन्ट ऑफ इंडिया वॉज दैट नॉलेज ऑल दो लिटरली मीन्स टू नो बट द रियल नॉलेज कैन नॉट बी एट्रीब्यूटेड टू ए पर्सन अनलेस हिज प्रैक्टिस हिज एक्शंस कन्फर्म टू दैट नॉलेज If I know, for example, if I know that certain things are harmful for my health, this is a knowledge. But still, you know, despite knowing that this is harmful, I take these things and keep keep them eating. So, although I have knowledge, but this the knowledge does not give me any benefit. because i am violating the principle that i know i am violating the very thing i know i know so it cannot benefit anyone likewise the knowledge of sharia for example this is fard this is wajib this is sunna this is mustahab etc this knowledge merely this knowledge is not enough unless one observes in his practice observes all the farais and wajibat and also tries to follow the sunna of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in every aspect of his life so a person cannot be said to be knowledgeable unless he follows what he knows unless he practices upon the the principles and upon the uh, the precepts of sharia that he knows to be a part of sharia and and allah subhanahu wa taala has has pointed out to this very uh, very important principle in a verse of his surah al baqarah where he has referred to the jews he says wa laqad alimu laman ishtarahu ma lahu fil akhirati min khalaq wa laqad alimu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they certainly know that who the person who does this this thing will not have any uh, any benefit in the life here and after laqad alimu they certainly know in the beginning of the aya he the rasul the allah subhanahu wa taala has affirmed their knowledge about this thing and then at the end of the aya allah subhanahu wa taala says law kanu ya'lamu law kanu ya'lamu oh that they might have known it and in the beginning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms knowledge for the jews and the end of the aya negates the, the knowledge it means that when he says that they know it means that they know merely uh, to the extent of knowledge but when he said that they do not know it means that they do not really know they don't have real knowledge because had they the real their knowledge they would not indulge themselves in these activities that are disliked by allah subhanahu wa taala so mere knowledge is not enough unless this knowledge leads someone to practice and is reflected through his acts 
reflected through his behavior, through his attitude towards other people. So in this respect, if we analyze the lives of different scholars throughout the world, so the majority of the scholars of subcontinent of India and especially of Ulama of Deoban, they were the they were uh, reflecting the true knowledge in the sense that they gave full importance to following the sunnah of Rasulullah in every aspect of their life. There are people who say that uh, we will restrict ourselves to the faraiz and wajibat obligations. So far as, as sunnah is concerned or a mustahab or mandub is concerned, because these are a third degree uh, rules of Sharia. Therefore, if someone avoids them, someone forgets them, someone does not practice on them, there is no harm. But the, uh, but the people, the scholars of ulama of Deoband, rahimahumullah ta'ala, they at one side they had a deep knowledge of Islamic disciplines and on the other hand they reflect the that knowledge reflected was reflected in their acts and their behavior and their in day to day life and this is the point on which i wrote this small book akabir deoban chat if you literally translate the title, it would be what were the elders of uh, Devan? What were? The basic purpose is that what kind of people they were? What kind of pe human beings they were? So I have cited many examples of their lives. This is not a, a biography of these scholars, a detailed biography. But it, uh, you know, contains different incidents, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, in the form of some anecdotes that reflect their true, pic the true picture of their understanding, their depth in knowledge on, on the one hand and their zeal to practice Sharia and Sunnah of the Holy Prophet on the other. 